Uh, across the Diocese of Tulsa uh, today, uh, we're just mentioning very briefly uh, the Diocese of Tulsa Faith and Works Annual Appeal. There's envelopes in your pews. If you're a registered parishioner, you probably got one in, in the mail. Um, this is just our opportunity to help the diocese to continue the good work that's being done in and around eastern Oklahoma, prison ministry and vocations and Hispanic ministry and many, many, many things. So that's that envelope and pen in your uh, pew. If you didn't have that at home and you'd like to take one of those home, we'd love to have your support. Our parish school is $82,000. I hope we get there and exceed it and be able to help uh, Bishop Condorla and the good work of the diocese. Uh, the readings today um, speak about revenge and resentment. Those are two things that are generally present in everyone's life. We probably don't think of ourselves as revenge seekers. But then, like at work, somebody does something to us that kind of bothers us. And then we give them the silent treatment. That's revenge. It's a subtle, quiet revenge, but revenge nonetheless. We do it to spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends. We do it to coworkers. We do it to brothers and sisters. The readings today speak about revenge and resentment. There's a great quote. I don't know where it came from, but it says this. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. On the readings today, and specifically the teachings in Matthew chapter 5, which is what we've been listening to over the last several weeks, are calling us to a higher way of living. Um, resentment is a part of everyone's life. There's people that have wronged us, maybe something small, maybe something quite large. People that have wronged us, and we hold in our heart anger towards them. Maybe it's an individual person. Maybe it's a particular group of people. We hold resentment in our heart against others. And while that's kind of a natural way of living, we all do it. Every single one of us. None of us are immune from that. Even kids hold on to resentment. It's not the way that we were meant to live. And so Jesus comes along in these beautiful words, and he says, You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, Right? So he's saying, that's the old way of looking at it, but now we're going to turn a page and we're going to do it differently. Jesus is calling us to freedom. When we walk around with resentment, we're not free. We're not as free as we could be. And so Jesus invites us into a relationship with him. We call him the Prince of Peace. That if we're going to have peace in our lives... It's going to come from him. It's a peace that the world cannot give. Only in Christ. I'm reminded of a beautiful, soon-to-be saint, I think, in our church. He was a Vietnamese bishop back in the 1970s, died in the early 2000s. Cardinal Francis Xavier Van Thuan. And he was the bishop of Saigon, Vietnam, as Vietnam fell, 1975, I think it was. Well, he had been the bishop for six days and was captured and thrown into prison. Cardinal Van Thuan lived in that prison for 13 years, nine of them in solitary confinement. Can you imagine a more difficult life? cut off from family and friends, cut off from the priesthood, cut off from everything that was important to him, put into a prison cell. Cardinal Von Tuan found some paper to write on, and he would every day write little phrases, little thoughts, 
And he would pass them off to this little boy that would run by his cell and they would go out and the people were able to receive messages from him. And one of the things that Cardinal Von Tuan said during his 13 years in prison is he said, I've never been more free. I've never been more free. He's in prison. He's in solitary confinement, cut off from civilization. But what he meant was that he had such a deep faith in Christ, that his faith was so strong that he did not harbor resentment against his jailers. In fact, he spent much of his 13 years ministering to the very people who put him in prison. There were conversions of the prison guards that held him. Cardinal Von Tuan had such freedom in Christ that it didn't matter where he was. It didn't matter what was happening to him. He was free. Now, I see some of you shaking your heads. I would shake my head too. It seems almost unbelievable. How could that even be possible? But it's the kind of life that the Lord Jesus is calling us to. To a way of life that is free of revenge and free of resentment. We have, starting Wednesday, the season of Lent. A beautiful time of year. 40 days to prepare ourselves for the celebration of Easter. In these 40 days, the church recommends kind of three spiritual pathways to grow in our relationship with Christ. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. In the area of prayer, I recommend whatever you're doing, step it up. Take on more. Spend more time in prayer. Spend a higher quality of time in prayer. It's going to look different for each one of us. In the area of almsgiving, to step up our giving. It doesn't have to be money. It can be of our time, being generous to those around us. Perhaps, based on today's gospel, being especially generous to our enemies. Being generous to the people against whom we hold some resentment. And fasting. We so often associate fasting with food. But what if, during the season of Lent, as a parish, as a family, as an individual, we fasted from being resentful against people who have harmed us? My argument would be, you're going to be better. You're going to feel better. Your life is going to be better if we're not walking around with all of the resentments that we hold. For some of us, there might even be a resentment against God. Maybe we've been handed a particular set of circumstances in our life that are pretty difficult, not favorable towards us. We have this resentment, God, why did you do this to me? The Lord is inviting us into a newfound freedom. It's a freedom in a relationship with Christ. It's been said that no man was more free than when Christ was on the cross. Now, look up there. He doesn't look very free. But Jesus went to the cross knowing what was happening to him. He went to the cross fully aware of the way that he was about to give of himself, fully aware of this generous way of life that he was proposing to us. So, easier said than done. I don't propose that this is just flip on a switch and suddenly all revenge and all resentment goes away. Doesn't work that way. But what I do propose, and more importantly, what Jesus proposes to us, is freedom in Christ from all of those things that hold us back from a deeper relationship with him. Guys, it's a better way of living, free of resentment. And so we start that journey today. I'm not promising that all resentment goes away by the time your head hits the pillow tonight. I'm not promising that all that resentment goes away by the time Easter comes around April 9th. But if we start down this road, you and I are going to be more free. 
free of those attachments, free of those resentments, free of that revenge-seeking that we sometimes do, even to those that we love the most. Jesus proposes to us a better way of life, freedom in him. And so we draw deeper into that relationship today as we receive Holy Communion, as we come into the Lord's presence. It is in him that we are free.